Well, we start with global trade and the news that one in five commercial ships are now avoiding the Red Sea because of the threat of attack. That's according to the International Chamber of Shipping. It includes ships operated by two of the world's biggest shipping firms, Maersk and Hapag Lloyd. Later today, the UN Security Council is expected to meet and produce a diplomatic response. The Red Sea accounts for 15% of the world's shipping and plays a crucial part in the global supply chain. UK companies have been telling the BBC that shipping delays could push up prices. Well, let's speak now to Tzvi Schreiber, who's the CEO of Freitos, an online marketplace for the international shipping industry based in Israel. Uh, thank you very much for being with us today, Mr Schreiber. Um, one in five commercial ships avoiding the area. Now, some might say it doesn't sound that dramatic, one in five. Is it? Well, yes, it's hugely dramatic. Uh, to put it in context, there's about four and a half million 20-foot uh, containers equivalent going back and forth through the Suez Canal. Um, and daily this is changing. You know, um, there's a couple of days of quiet and they start getting uh, routed through the Suez Canal again. And then there's a, a rocket or an attack and ships are either be being told to stop and wait or they're being sent back to go and circumvent all of Africa, which takes an extra couple of weeks. Um, so this is a, a huge um, issue for, for world trade and vast numbers of goods which are being delayed and um, rerouted, you know, day to day. Sure. So there was a big attack over the weekend on a Maersk, Maersk ship, which uh, Houthi rebels from Yemen tried to board. And it also provoked or brought about, I would say, probably the most dramatic response so far. The US Navy defended the vessel, sank the boats of the attackers. Is there a chance that that dramatic response itself could uh, uh, stem, the, stem these attacks? I think not immediately. Uh, in fact, uh, Musk had just had suspended um, sailings through the uh, Red Sea, and then they just reinstated that. And then this uh, attack happened, and so they've suspended them again. Uh, and I'm sure they'll be uh, cautious before uh, rerouting it. So, of course, people are, are watching uh, the news and the uh, response of the American-led uh, coalition. Uh, but but it won't take you know it, it won't take just one counterattack to uh, make the make the carriers feel confident. They're going to be watching this for several days or even weeks uh, before they feel safe to send their crews back through the Suez Canal. Uh, clearly, this is creating headaches for people like you in the industry. But for ordinary consumers at home, there are warnings of of, of price rises. Um, what do you think could happen? What could the consequence be for ordinary consumers? So that's also evolving uh, rapidly. Let's talk about prices and let's talk about supply shortages. Uh, in terms of prices, um, our Freitos terminal tracks the, the prices and our FBX 11 index before New Year had shown prices jump on the Suez route uh, from $1,200 to $1,600. That's a 30% Increase, which may sound like a lot, but in our industry, it's a very volatile industry. That's not considered a very dramatic uh, increase. But over the new year, prices shot up to over $4,000. Uh, we'll see if that will stick or not. But that's already a, a substantial uh, price increase. And you could see a little bit of that passed on to consumers if the prices stay so high. Um, in terms, though, of prices and supply, it's worth pointing out that fortunately, we're after the holiday season. So the peak season of shipping, of course, is, is the lead up to uh, Christmas and Thanksgiving in the US. Uh, that is past. And in general, the network has got spare capacity now. Unlike during COVID, uh, the last time the Suez Canal was blocked in March 2021, uh, there was a big shortage of, of shipping capacity. Uh, there is uh, over shipping capacity right now. Sure. So the network is able to better um, cope. So we will see some delays and some price increase, but we're not expecting okay. anything nearly as dramatic as we saw during COVID, hopefully. Great stuff. Uh, Tzvi Schreiber from Freitas, thank you very much for joining us with that.